So on the Force Unleashed 2, we had a specialized ambient audio designer working at Skywalker Ranch by the name of Eric Foreman. And working remotely from Skywalker Ranch, he was able to, in the game engine, um, place ambient emitters throughout the game level and connected with WISE, uh, in real time tweak their attenuation curves in order to get the kind of uh, experience that you wanted for the player based on their position uh, in relation to these ambient elements. And so working in-house at LucasArts, I would uh, pick up his changes in Wise and go through levels uh, looking around and once in a while I'd hear something that was just blowing my mind. Go dig into that, read the tea leaves in the Wise project and look at what Eric had done and he was very, uh, he was taking a very hand-done approach to adjusting these curves in not just a linear logarithmic or, uh, you know, expected curve, but he was actually doing just waves of, uh, of attenuation in order to push and pull these sounds dynamically based on the player position in relation to these sounds. And so he wasn't satisfied with this idea that a sound is, is static and has a, a uh, expected uh, volume curve. Uh, he was more drawing, I think, from this idea that there's more to the sound in a world than just a mathematical curve that's always the same. And so, his artistry with that contributed hugely to the overall sound of the environments in the game by really custom tailoring each of those curves based on the kind of sound that he had added to the level. And uh, it's that kind of level of detail, I think, that, that really gives you, puts the power in your hands uh, as you're connected to the game to really dial in the way that you want to present that to the player, the way you want that to hear. And then, of course, the player's in control they will experience it the way that, that they experience it based on how they play. And to me, uh, being able to do that in real time just brings it all home. Using the 3D positioning and the attenuation curves and Ys is it's pretty easy, pretty intuitive, um, and you can really create amazing, very custom curves uh, not only do you just get a kind of a linear drop off in volume, but you can really tailor it to drop off hard at, at any certain point. Or uh, often what I use it for is distant versus near explosion sounds or, or lar large sounds that can happen close to you or are in the distance. I'll actually create two inverse, uh, inverse attenuation curves so that it will seamlessly blend between the upfront large explosion sound and maybe a really nice distant sound. And then you can get kind of everywhere in between.